advances the argument that settler colonialism offers uh, the, the uh, and that that it is uh, uh, to give us a better understanding, a deeper understanding of the multiple structures and functions of the state of uh, Israel, including its institutional, social, and economic structures, and its internal and external policies. This paper contributes to the ongoing uh, debate um, um, the, by analyzing the organic relationship between Israel uh, settler uh, colonialism and its tireless efforts to develop its military and security arsenals in order to enhance our understanding of the importance of the war economy as the uh, lifeblood of this uh, project. Uh, this uh, uh, Israel to embark on an unlimited and large-scale uh, mobilization of human and economic resources to serve the construction of the war economy, including the military industrial complex uh, investment between um, uh, Israel has been uh, between the, in the period of 2015 2019 Israel was ranked as the eighth uh, largest arms exporter in the world uh, and its contribution was estimated at three percent of arms exports an increase of 77 percent from the previous four years this rise was accompanied by the abundance uh, and abundance of studies and reports to uh, see uh, the Israeli uh, military security development as a unique miracle that transformed the small country into a high-tech superpower in a relatively short time. These readings tend to adopt deductive uh, approaches to explain Israel's um, global rise in this field with uh, their primary focus on factors that can be considered ob uh, objectively uh, secondary. Factors in a uh, focus include, for example, the spread of culture, um, uh, innovations, and uh, uh, going uh, high tech. Uh, despite all this, uh, uh, the importance of these factors, the uh, um, uh, Israeli case has a specific related to its uh, historic context, uh, context and current sector, which may it is the main source of fueling the Israeli obsession with military and security superiority. This obsession should be understood as ideology, thought, and practice. The Israeli case can be understood as a contemporary extension of historical colonial situations. Historically, all colonial and settler colonial formations by uh, their nature practiced uh, structural violence and a constant mobilization of wars to expand and strengthen their colonial projects. Violence and colonial wars uh, systematically targeted the colonized areas uh, through extermination, displacement, and imposition of brutal experiments with Western modernity and technology. These policies and practices were central to colonial logic in which the dynamics of uh, violence and colonial uh, wars were a catalyst for the creation of military arsenals for the organization of the army and strategies and tactics of war. No less important, uh, uh, important colonialism also contributed greatly to invention and development of security and surveillance techniques uh, to control the population in colonized areas. Uh, and uh, these areas were, were uh, developed just uh, for uh, colonizing, like, uh, and laboratories, how colonies have served as laboratories developed into surveillance and control techniques. Uh, um, the emergence of um, um, uh, the emergence of the Zionist movement and the subsequent, subsequent establishment uh, of Israel in Palestine opened a prolonged uh, chapter of uh, wars and violence in the region and provided an impact for Israel to develop military and political uh, the, um, the logic force is rooted in the Zionist move. This is evident in the Zionist literature. So this had became a uh, main of the uh, uh, practice, and it was practiced with by all inflicting successive defeats. Um, this approach remained the founding pillars of the political mind in Israel. And as um, uh, uh, David Bulgarian has said, Zionist uh, politics is first and foremost the politics of power. Politics means strength, the accumulation of power, expansion of power. On the other hand, Military superiority is a prerequisite for maintaining the expansionist um, uh, colonial character in the Jewish state and keeping it uh, immune from threats by crushing resistance uh, movements and subjecting them to military defeat. On the other hand, Israel's quest 
Ukraine has its military capabilities is motivated to a large extent by the desire to impose qualitative military superiority on Arab regional countries and to impose unbalanced powers, uh, rela power relations that are subject to Israeli calculations and interests. Israel's uh, success in military and security innovations cannot be fully understood without highlighting the vital assistance provided by the United States and other Western countries. The Zionist movement and uh, later Israel succeeded in establishing sp sponsor client relations with the Western powers, especially those with a settler colonial past such as Britain, France, and the U.S. Uh, interestingly, settler colonialism uh, has become a widely accepted explanation for understanding the ideological dimension of the American-Israeli alliance. This common um, uh, feature has been translated into a strategic equation between the sponsor and the customer, whereby Israel serves an integrated set of uh, U.S. interests in the region in return for financial policy military and uh, diplomatic support. This explains the rationale behind the U.S. commitment to enabling Israel's qualitative military edge over its neighbors. It's a central uh, foreign policy objective codified in uh, 2008 law. Actually, uh, uh, Israel being um, uh, subject to the military and security capabilities, uh, is, uh, is, 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 it's not able to um, meet the needs of the uh, Israeli army. And according to the U.S., uh, the um, U.S. Uh, supported not only help uh, the U.S. and the Israelis um, uh, security in, uh, to be the first in the world, but also had helped Israel to build um, a defense uh, mechanism it has. Uh, therefore, it wasn't able to get Israel as a technology and uh, power without the U.S. Um, support. Uh, the development and growth of uh, the security industries and the technology can be categorized into three distinct phases. Each stage was shaped to the historical development of Israel's colonial settlement structure and defined by the number of factors, including the reg uh, Israel's regional wars, foreign alliances, and military aid shifts in regional and global power relations and the transformation of Israel's political economy. The first phase covers the early years of state building uh, since 1948 until 1967 which had witnessed uh, the emergence of the Israeli army from military gangs active in mandatory Palestine, such as the Haganah, the Irgun, and the Stern, which have carried out uh, campaigns of ethnic cleansing against Palestinians. The strategic importance of the um, army of uh, the, for the state of Palestine and society has translated into a, a broad mobilization of economic resources and the human capital to serve the establishment of a military industrial complex. The central economic planning model and state ownership of most of the means of military production had the most important impact of formation of this uh, um, complex uh, from an early period, which relied on a loose alliance between interests the group composed of the political uh, elite and military establishment and private capital. Unlike the concept of a uh, military industrial complex uh, prevalent in the countries such as the U.S. and Russia, the Israeli uh, military industrial complex is unique in that it's organically linked to a wide range of supposedly civilian institutions such as the Hebrew University, the Technion Institute, uh, Wiseman Institutes, and Hadassah Hospital and others. The first phase witnessed the formation of military intelligence units from spy teams that were operating in mandatory Palestine, and these units um, were tasked in developing the technological infrastructure for the army, like the uh, Rafael uh, Science Corps uh, that was renamed Rafael uh, Advanced Defense System in the late 50s, which has become uh, nowadays the largest research center in Palestine. Israel has established uh, uh, large state-owned companies such as the uh, IMI Systems, Israel Military Industries that related to TAS. It's a secret network of uh, light uh, arms uh, manufacturers that supplied uh, light weapons and ammunition to Zionist gangs in the 1930s and 40s. In the 50s, uh, 500s, um, also uh, another uh, Israeli aerospace industry was a uh, supplier. Uh, this, uh, uh, there, there were uh, state, uh, uh, other uh, states like a uh, big system. Uh, that was designed. Um, one of the uh, it's one of the first private companies founded in 60s. Uh, Albite Systems. It's now uh, the largest private producer of a wide range of military electronics, drones, and uh, and sea systems communications. Uh, um, and uh, furthermore, Israel's largest trade union, Histadrut, has enjoyed significant in investments in the military uh, industry, uh, mainly through ownerships of. 
uh, and its subsidiaries like Tadiran, uh, Soltam, uh, Conor, uh, Core Metals, which relies on subcontracting to state-owned military uh, uh, industries. Despite enormous efforts, uh, Israel remained uh, structurally dependent on military imports and foreign aid. In this phase, France was the main source of arms imports and supplied the Israeli army with the highly advanced aviation, missile, and nuclear technologies, especially um, uh, nuclear. And um, the other phase uh, started from 1967 until the 80s. It was determined by the results of uh, uh, wars uh, 1967 and 73 which reshaped the Israeli uh, military industrial path on two main levels. One was a government decision to embark on a large scale of modernization and the diversification of military in industries and technologies. And the other was the strengthening of the U.S.-Israel alliance, which provided uh, strategic resources. Initially, uh, Israel developed a strategy to expand and strengthen its military industries as a result of the French arms embargo on the eve of the 1967 war. Accordingly, investment in military industrial uh, industry uh, constituted up to 50 percent of the total industrial investment in israel military uh, spending rose by 77 percent and reached uh, a historic uh, rise of 31 uh, percent of the gdp after the 1973 war the massive uh, investment in the military sector has greatly shaped the structure of the israeli workforce between 1967 and 1975 Employment in the military uh, uh, tripled and increased by 50% in 1975. In addition, 65% of the state expenditure on research and development were related to the military, while only 13% were for civilian purposes. And about half of the scientists and engineers in Israel were engaged in military research and development projects. On the other hand, the strengthening of bilateral um, relations between the U.S. and Israel has been the most um, important factor in Israel's military and technology uh, product, uh, progress. After 1967, a war, American companies intensified their participation in the development of Israel's arsenal. 1969, the Minister of Defense sold its stakes in his said route owned companies to a U.S. company. In 1971, uh, Lockheed Martin uh, is one of the world's largest defense um, manuf um, and factors supplied Israel with advanced high destructive weapons, including F-16, which has become the backbone of the Israeli Air Force. But there are other contributors, including and many. Um, uh, by the start of the 80s, uh, Israeli arm, uh, but it started to to depend completely on the, um, uh, the Israeli military industry has become structurally dependent on uh, technical financial assistance from the U.S. government. A 1983 report showed that um, uh, by the U.S. government accountably showed that uh, is uh, noting that Israel has received U.S. financial and technical support to help achieve its arms production capacity. I think in an effort to promote a, gal a great uh, self-reliance israel seeks more aid to help develop its defense industries and expand its trade opportunities israel's uh, t technology uh, depends um, uh, exports uh, depend heavily on foreign components almost all uh, uh, israeli arms uh, production efforts involve american input the third stage which is from the 80s up till the present it's related to the new liberalization uh, of the Israeli economy in the mid 80s, which at attracted new businesses, um, business opportunities through the, um, the complete privatization of state owned industries, uh, like the um, IMI systems, has been um, has seen the gradual privatization of uh, some of its uh, subsidiaries. The Israel uh, government sold uh, its uh, stakes, um, like um, um, Rafael. And it also in recently announced it will privatize uh, key companies um, such as Aerospace, IAI, and Rafael Advanced Defense. And this stage also witnessed the escalation of the so called war on terror led by the US. And the post-1911 era has been marked by a radical change towards an investigation of securitization practices and the um, militarization of uh, policy practices. These changes have made Israel the center of international attention and, and as a unique global model of urban militarization and uh, securitization, a reputation built by a by the case of colonial experience um, uh, developing uh, methods of uh, counter surgery 
um, uh, finally, I would like to highlight one case in terms of how Israel uses Palestinians as um, guinea pigs in order to test its military innovations as a brand to ex for export and trade. Israel's military and security progress is highly dependent on turning the occupied Palestinian uh, territory uh, and population into a laboratory of experiments uh, using advanced uh, counter um, insurgency uh, techniques, types of weapons and surveillance and control. These products are then pr uh, promoted with marketing slogans such as battle tested and combat proven, giving uh, Israeli companies a competitive advant advantage in the global arms market. Accordingly, uh, Israeli uh, military and security innovations are indispensable uh, to the survival of uh, Israel's settler colonial uh, makeup and are integral <coughs> to the growth of the war economy. Israel is credited with being a world leader in the production of lethal drone technology. The Israeli scientist Abraham Karim was the first to revolutionize the drone industry, which Israel uh, first tested during the 1973 war. And since the 80s, Israel has accounted for more than 60% of global uh, drones exports, uh, and now more than 50 public and private companies are engaged in the production of and export drones, uh, including Elbite and the Israeli Aerospace Industries Corporation. Of course, uh, uh, the Israeli companies are to produce the and develop drones is due to the ex experiments they conduct on Palestinians. Experiments uh, with deadly drones technicians intensified during the second Palestinian Intifada and the Israeli war on Lebanon in 2006, and the aggression on Gaza since 2011, uh, 8 to 12, 12, 14, and till the last war. Israel also deploys drones for three military objectives. First, uh, to conduct uh, surveillance, uh, intelligence, uh, uh, or target uh, killing, uh, target ki or um, extrajudicial executions against the leaders of uh, and activists of uh, Palestinians. Israel was the first to make a policy of targeted killing uh, legal to justify the assassination of Palestinian leaders, despite the illegality of such a practice in international law. The heavy use of drones in targeted uh, killing has led to the creation of the world's largest laboratory for airborne assassinations. Uh, furthermore, Israel is systematically uh, testing new types of lethal drones on civilians for um, just commercial purposes. For example, during uh, the 2008 war, the IDF uh, tested an upgraded version of the Hydra uh, remotely piloted missile jointly developed by Israel and the U.S. companies that likely um, carried white um, phosphorus and that killed uh, dozens of civilians in Gaza City and Jabalika. In another case, an investigative uh, report in 2014 showed that 37% of deaths, including 165 children, were caused by drone attacks. It was later re revealed that the mass killing were part of experiments uh, done by Israeli forces to test drones um, uh, produced by El Bayt, uh, which produce uh, about 85% of the drones in Israel. Uh, and, uh, and the company experienced a growth of 6.1% uh, after the 2014 war, which is the highest uh, uh, level ever. According to the Israeli Daily Haar, it's um, a newspaper, the process has been, from a commercial point of view, a great thing for the defense industries. Uh, finally, any consideration to the contribution of Israel in the uh, high-tech um, industries around the world should uh, take into consideration the roots of colonialism uh, that, that it practices, which were based completely on uh, crimes. Uh, accordingly, the combating uh, colonial um, uh, occupation shouldn't be only a Palestinian issue, but should be a, 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 an international case. Thank you.